Welcome to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about how to model sounds by combining the sinusoidal or harmonic approach uh, that we talked in the previous weeks with the idea of a residual or a stochastic component. And the core aspect of that is how to subtract the sinusoids of a sound from the actual sound. And this is what we're going to, we're going to be talking about in this uh, programming lecture from a programming perspective. So we'll go, we, we're going to be implementing the subtraction of sinusoids from a uh, signal. And we're going to do it through the HPR model, the implementation of the model that uh, we have within the SMS tools package. So basically we're going to be talking about this uh, block uh, diagram uh, in which uh, w from the input sound and uh, all the, the analysis that we have be already been talking about, the computing of the spectrum, detection of the peaks, in the case of the harmonic models, detection of the fundamental frequency and identification of the harmonics, then we are synthesizing these harmonics in the spectral domain, so we are synthesizing the, the lobes of, uh, of the harmonics, and now in this, uh, in this uh, week, what we are focusing on is on this subtraction. So we are focusing on how these uh, sinusoids can be subtracted from the original signal. And uh, what, uh, what we do is we compute again the spectrum of the input signal with the same parameters, so therefore with the same window that is uh, implicit or in fact is quite explicit in the spectral domain of these uh, sinusoids uh, so that then we can subtract them and uh, then this residual spectrum can be summed to the harmonic spectrum and obtain the time domain um, synthesized signal by combining the two. So let's uh, look at uh, some code that they wrote uh, to uh, show this in a concise way, so I, uh, I wrote some code that just uh, does it for one single frame. So first uh, we import all the packages that we need uh, for uh, this uh, analysis. Okay, we already have seen uh, all of these uh, packages. And then um, we read a sound file, so we're going to start from the oboe sound, uh, the A4. And uh, we need to specify some parameters. In particular, uh, we're going to be analyzing only one frame, so we, cho we choose the, the location, the pointer where we're going to be reading uh, the, the sound from, so the, the place 40,000 uh, uh, sample. Okay. And then, uh, well, we need a window size M. Uh, we take uh, 801 samples. We need an FFT size uh, bigger than that. Let's uh, so we take uh, 2048. Then we need a threshold for identifying the peaks. Uh, since we're going to be doing a harmonic analysis, we need a minimum and maximum frequencies to look for uh, the the fundamental frequency. Then we need uh, an error threshold to uh, to have uh, the lower bound for the algorithm that uh, we are using for F0 detection, the two-way mismatch error uh, function, then uh, we will uh, decide how many harmonics, the maximum number of harmonics that uh, we are going to be identifying, and this is the, the deviation slope that uh, we uh, choose so that uh, the higher harmonics have a higher degree of uh, deviation than the lower ones. Okay, so these are the parameters, and now we start uh, by computing things. Uh, so first we compute the analysis window and we take the Blackman window. Then uh, since uh, we're going to be doing this subtraction, the phase information is fundamental. We need to do zero phase window. This is where uh, is fundamental the idea of uh, centering everything around zero so that the, the time domain uh, basically waveforms, they align perfectly so that uh, the phases uh, match and therefore uh, the subtraction is possible. And here the odd size window is uh, again uh, fundamental. So that's why we need to compute the center of the window in uh, this way. Okay, then uh, we choose uh, the fragment of the sound 
and here we the pointer so we, we choose the center of the window the pointer is the center of the window and we take half of the samples from uh, the left of this uh, pointer and half of the samples on the right of this pointer okay so this is going to be our uh, sound that we analyze and then uh, we have uh, seen all this before we compute the dft of this fragment of the sound we find the peaks we interpolate the peaks with parabolic interpolation well, in here we convert uh, locations to hertz and now we detect the fundamental frequency okay so we call the two-way mismatch algorithm and it returns the best uh, candidate for fundamental frequency and we identify all the harmonics by calling the harmonic uh, detection function that looks for the peaks that are closest to the multiples of the fundamental frequency okay and now uh, we can synthesize these uh, harmonics that we have identified and we synthesize it with another FFT and, uh, and window that uh, we did uh, with the original analysis. So now we take an FFT of 512 and half of that is 256 and we're going to be synthesizing uh, the spectral signs, so the main lobes of the Blackman uh, window Okay, and this is the YH, is the complete spectrum of uh, the, this uh, harmonic component. And now, this is what we are basically focusing on this week. We have to subtract these harmonics from the original signal. But to do that, we need to recompute the spectrum of the original signal so that we use the blackman harris window that is in uh, this spectrum okay so we have to compute a window a blackman harris window of the size of the same uh, uh, size that we are now using for uh, the synthesis 512 and then we're going to choose again from the original signal uh, of the fragment of the sound but only the 512 samples around the pointer so here we, uh, we choose another uh, original signal with uh, these, uh, these uh, 512 samples and multiplied by the blackman harris window normalized so that then uh, it becomes easier to compute, um, the, to do the subtraction. Okay, and so this is our new input signal and then we have to zero uh, zero phase uh, window it so we have to put it around zero and we do that by defining the FFT buffer we're going to use and center everything around uh, zero and then we can compute uh, the spectrum of that and the the subtraction of the sinusoids then becomes uh, easy it's just a complex subtraction we subtract the harmonics the harmonic spectrum from this new uh, spectrum that we just compute. So okay, so let's uh, run this and let's step uh, through uh, the different variables that we have been generating. So this is uh, the file called test3. Uh, okay, so this uh, has computed it. And now let's keep uh, looking at the different variables. So for example, let's plot the x1 uh, sound. Okay, this is the fragment of the sound we uh, are analyzing. Okay, then we can plot the resulting X spectrum that uh, we uh, computed from that. So we can plot MX. Okay, so this is uh, in dB the magnitude spectrum of that. Then it has computed out of that a uh, peak. So we can even just print uh, the, the, the locations of the peak. So EP log is the peaks are the peaks that it has found within the array of uh, of the FFT it's better to show it in uh, in Hertz so if we uh, print IP frequency is the frequency of the peaks it has found okay then this has gone to uh, the, um, the F0 detection so it has identified the fundamental frequency and the fundamental frequency uh, has been chosen to be 443 hertz which makes sense we're analyzing a novo sound uh, an a4 
and then out of this fundamental frequency it has chosen the the peaks that are harmonics of this so h frequency is uh, the set of harmonics that it has identified in this particular uh, location so it has identified all these harmonics the other peaks have not been considered harmonics of course we have uh, chosen a, a threshold and a, a given a set of parameters that um, has limited the number of harmonics to these uh, 6,000 so it becomes easier so we just have analyzed up and to uh, this, uh, uh, this harmonic. Okay, then we generate these harmonics as a spectrum, and uh, so it has generated YH. So if we plot the absolute value of uh, YH, we're going to see the, the, the magnitude of the complete spectrum. But let's uh, plot it just the, in, uh, in dB, so we will just plot in 20 uh, times log 10 of the absolute value of uh, YH. And let's just take only, let's say, the first uh, 70 samples, so from the beginning to the sample 70. So we focus on the first harmonics, which are the ones that basically we have generated. Okay, so these are the harmonics that we basically we have synthesized. This is the synthesized spectrum. On top of that, we can plot the, the signal that from the original sound that we have recomputed, so X2, the X2 uh, spectrum. Okay, so if we plot on top of that the absolute value of X2, in here, we now see the green line, which is basically the original spectrum. And as you can see, it's very much similar. So that means that we very much have synthesized the, the original spectrum. And then we can uh, plot the subtracted spectrum. So the subtracted is uh, the XR spectrum. And this is uh, this uh, red line. Okay? So the red line is the subtraction of the two and it, uh, it clearly shows the residual that it has. Okay, so um, this works and basically we do that at every frame and then of course we can uh, do the inverse to generate uh, all these signals back. Now let me show you the actual code that uh, is in the SMS tools package that performs this harmonic plus residual modeling. So there is this file called hprmodel.py uh, within the models uh, directory and in it uh, there is uh, the analysis and synthesis of uh, HPR modeling. There is one function that uh, does uh, the analysis, another one that uh, performs the synthesis and then there is another one that does both the analysis and synthesis at one frame at a time. In fact, we recommend very much to do the analysis and synthesis separate so that we can take advantage of uh, cleaning the trajectories and uh, having some memory in the tracking so that the, the, the harmonics are better. And um, in the analysis uh, part of the function, it basically calls two functions, one uh, that we already have seen. It does the harmonic analysis in the same way that uh, uh, we saw it when we talk about the harmonic model and then the new thing that it does is the subtraction so there is this function sign subtraction that uh, has as input the harmonics identified by the harmonic model has as input also the input sound again and it subtracts the harmonics from this uh, input sound so this uh, function is in the util functions uh, directory uh, in the file and in here you find the sign uh, subtraction uh, function and it basically does what I have explained uh, just a while ago. Uh, it goes through the sound and then at every uh, frame it does the subtraction of the sinusoids. So the sinusoids have already been, been uh, identified. So here it iterates over all the analyzed frame and then it 
uh, reads again a fragment of the input sound, it recomputes the input sound with this uh, window, with the Blackman Harris window, and then it synthesizes the harmonics uh, with this uh, Blackman uh, main loop, and then is able to subtract uh, the, the harmonics from the input sound. And that's all. And then it uh, synthesizes the, the residual signal uh, back and, and does the windowing effect so we can do the overlap at uh, correctly. And that's, uh, that's all. That's uh, what uh, the sinusoidal subtraction does. And it returns, of course, the residual signal. And the output of the analysis is the, the harmonic uh, frequencies, magnitudes, and phases, and this residual signal. And then the synthesis, it basically receives back the harmonic magnitude and phases uh, that we uh, analyze and the residual signal and simply puts it together. So it calls the sinusoidal model uh, synthesis that we already uh, have seen and it simply adds the, these uh, sinusoids with uh, the residual. Um, and that's all. Um, then uh, we have this other uh, function, uh, hprmodelfunction.py, which is the, the file that puts it all together and is the, in fact the file that is called from the interface that we have been using. And it simply, uh, there is one function, uh, main, and that does the analysis and synthesis of a sound and it plots the intermediate values. So it calls the HPR model and L, okay, and then uh, well it computes the spectrogram of the residual so that we can show it uh, as as a spectrogram, and then it performs the synthesis and it generates the the overall output sound, the sum of the residual plus the harmonics and just the harmonics, and it it uh, writes the files into, uh, into the same directory. Okay, so now we can uh, execute this file. We can run this HPR model uh, function file and uh, it will uh, analyze a fragment of a saxophone sound, which is the default sound, with the HPR model. So we will get here, we see the harmonics of the sound and the background is the spectrogram of the residual, so we have computed the spectrogram of the residual, and here are the two together. And of course we can listen to them, uh, we can just, uh, in this uh, directory, it has saved uh, the residual signs and the sum of the two, so we can uh, just play the, the, for example, first the residual, okay, and then we can play, uh, for example, the signs. And uh, we can play uh, the sum of the two. Okay, and uh, that's, that's all. Basically, uh, we have gone through the, the harmonics plus residual model, and we have used uh, quite a bit of code from the SMS tools and uh, from Python to be able to subtract the harmonics from the residual. And hopefully that has given you uh, a programming perspective uh, to this idea of harmonic plus residual uh, subtraction. And it's not a very sophisticated thing from a signal processing point of view, but from a programming point of view, it's quite delicate. We have to be very careful in how to uh, put the signals and how to analyze them in order that they align perfectly and in order that the, the complex subtraction in the spectral domain uh, is, uh, is done correctly and we obtain a real residual. And that's all. So uh, in next class, we're going to take the next step, which will be to, uh, from a programming perspective, uh, look at the stochastic component. So how we can then convert this residual that we just uh, uh, computed into a stochastic component and then have the harmonics plus stochastic model. So see you next lecture. Bye-bye.